real quick, sir? Yes, sir. Here with the Oakland legend, Mr. Season veteran himself, you better know it. Richie Rich. First and foremost, the fans want to know, how's the knee feeling? Uh, it's, it's, it's getting better, man. I can bend it about 70 degrees. Uh, it ain't as painful, but uh, they say, they told me it's going to be eight months. I'm up in two. I got work to do, you know what I mean? So I'm, it's, I'm, I'm blessed. You've got this big old butt box you've been carrying around. What, what level of, uh, like, what kind of thrill is it for you to be like a boy again, to, to get your this thing autographed by some of the A's greats. Why was that important for you? Why is it so special to you? I'll be honest with you, Kev, like, you know me, my career was, it, was, it wasn't as long as a lot of rappers, you know, I was kind of in and out. So to be included in something like this, I used to work here. Me and Tushar used to work here. We were vendors. We used to sell Coca-Colas in here. So to come here and get these guys to sign the box, like I told my, I was telling my son, I said, I'm going to take the radio. He's like, for what? I said, I'm going to get all these autographs on it. He's like, then what you going to do? I said, I'm going to sell it. No, I'm going to keep it. But yeah, I just, wanted, I just wanted to get all the OGs, man, just to have that last moment with the park. You know, they done stole all our teams from us. So, but it's dope, though. And I got to catch Coco Chris. Barry was in and out of here so quick. I was trying to get Barry on there. What about Jose drilling that ball like that still, bro? Yeah, what was just as a fan, as someone who, you, you know, you were an honorary member today. Right. But what will you remember from this game and, and the performances you saw on the field? Them ladies, them, them girls hitting them home runs, that white girl in warm-ups who drilled about 15 of them. That's what I'm going to remember. Yeah. They was drilling them. But you know what? It's crazy because... I've been trying to get on this field to do a music video forever, and now they say this is the last day to be a baseball field. So just to get out here and fellowship with the people, guys like you, that's for short, a bunch of my other homies, man, it's, it's just a good feeling, you know? It's, it's, we can shoot a music video right now if you want. Yeah, let's do it. I'm just saying. All right, give me the mic. Yeah, yeah. In and out my zone, I roam like mobile phone. Ragtop vets, you cons and corner comb. Some bitches lie away when the day I come home. While the phone machine kicks, bitch, we ain't at home. Six million ways to my choose one. I chose to dispose of those who call themselves foes. Froze like hookers, stuck their toes like hoes. These amateur nuns are the pro. They ride to the high pro glow. The boss with the sauce got receipts to show. How much they cost? I can dedicate this to the riders who like to slip sideways. Beware, double shutting down the highways. Yee! <laughs> That is something that I will remember for the rest of my life. It's good, bro. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Man, that was fun. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing, weightsandbars.com. Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. Ike's Love and Sandwiches, championship-level sandwiches every single time. South Bay Construction, a reputation built on trust and by fuel good fueling your success conveniently located in santa clara off homestead road for more info go to fuelgoodmealprep.com i'm pumped coach i'm pumped because we are in week number 10 we've got some big games coming up to wrap up the regular season welcome to get sports focus everybody coach andrew is right there his Niners won yesterday. He was at the game. He had the best time of his life, from what I heard. Oh, yeah. So you were at the Niners game. I was at the Coliseum saying goodbye. Wow, that's crazy. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. No, it was a great. Can I tell you a little bit about my experience at the Oakland Coliseum? Go for it. Because I used to cover the A's for KICU back in the days. And I actually went to a bunch of Oakland A's games. Did a bunch of stuff with Brody Brazil and uh, a couple of other people. But check this out. Check this out. I got a call from Kevin a couple of days prior. He said, bro, you want to go to this thing with me? It's at the Coliseum. Uh, they're doing this softball fundraiser thing. And I was like, yeah, man, of course. I I'm I'm there to support our guys when they have, whenever they have gigs. I'm there to support him. Uh, if I can make it, I will do it. And I told Kevin, I was like, dude, yeah, I'm I'm in, bro. Matt, how you doing? Good to see you. Everything good? Everything's great. Good to see you blossoming, man. Matt Barnes, one of many stars in this Reggie Jackson softball classic today. 
Terrell Owens hitting BP right now. Mr. Fab waiting to do his thing. Ricky Henderson, Jose Canseco, Dave Stewart, Tony La Russa, Barry Bonds. I mean, like the list is incredible how many stars and former athletes are out here. Uh, it should be a blast. I get to host this thing. So they're gonna throw a mic in my hands and hopefully I don't mess it all up. But look at all the fans, man. This is like, this is amazing. This is the final baseball slash softball game that will be played that will be played here at the Oakland Coliseum. So this is history in the making, and y'all get to come for the. You, this is history in the making, and y'all get to come along for the ride. Yay. I saw Jose Canseco there, Barry Bonds, Matt Barnes, Dave Stewart, Dennis Eckersley, all these greats from the late '80s, early '90s Oakland A's. And the fact that it was going to be the last event at Oakland before they transform it into like a soccer stadium or something like that, um, I just had to go. And Kevin was the in-game host. He did a great job. I think he's got a future as far as being an in-game host. I, I know we're going to work hard and train on that. But um, I got there. I parked in the F lot, which is where the players usually park, you know the Warriors or the Raiders, whatever. It was, it was cool parking in the AF lot, right? Pulled up next to a uh, Porsche and I was surrounded with big cars. Anyways, as I was walking in, player security, I was walking down these steps that I remember. I was like, I haven't been here for a freaking long time. It's been a long time. There so, it is. The, the, <laughs> it was wet going down the stairs. It just sucked because I'm like, damn, it's still damp. <laughs> but once you get on the field, it, it's awesome, man. It, it was like, it's the Coliseum. One of the best places to be. Unfortunately, it's all probably gonna go away, but it was fun. Uh, I'm gonna have raw footage of my experience there and you guys could just watch anything and everything that I saw through the camera, of course. Um, Jose Canseco won the Home Run Derby. Congratulations, uh, of course. Uh, there's, there's like three professional players there, ladies that were smacking the ball. Like, it was awesome, man. It was an awesome experience. So while you were at the Niners game, I was over there chilling with, uh, with a bunch of the Oakland A's great. And uh, shout out to Kevin for taking me. Uh, it was definitely an experience that, um, that, that kind of like wrapped everything all up for me because I lost interest in baseball in general and, and uh, in the A's really after um, I stopped working for the state. I, I love baseball if I was playing it, but watching it, unless it's like the World Series, which is like right now, yeah, I can't, I can't really, I need to see action. I need to see action. But you know what? We're gonna get back to baseball this year because we're gonna have our own GSF Senior All-Star Baseball game. I believe it's a senior all-star baseball game, but it's definitely going to be an all-star game with Coach Anderson. Uh, he's going to be in charge of it, and I'm obviously on the other side of things. Um, but speaking of the all-star coach, we're making a lot of progress. The list is growing. So if you haven't already... Nominate your peeps. Yeah, you got to get nominated. Um, all the requirements are on GetSportsFocus.com. So yeah, can we can we emphasize like the main one of the main I would say the main the two main requirements. The and two main requirements. It, it both are very, very important. Um, you have to be an all-star on and off the field. 3.0 or above GPA must be a starter. Those are the if you have those, you're you're Consider yourself part of the team. Um, but well, you also have to be enrolled in a high school. But you can't play football unless you're in a high school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of like a given. Uh, but yeah, man, we got some big dudes. We we got some big timers. We got some we got some really good uh, kids that are going to be representing their schools this year, and I can't wait to reveal some of these players' name and 
I'm excited, Coach. I mean, you kind of got a little preview of it, so. Heck, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm excited for it. But, like, you know, again, to emphasize, like, you know, that that part about being an all-star on and off the field, it's like, you know, you guys also got to understand, too, like, it's not given to you. Like, this is earned. The semester is almost over which means as the season is closing. So if you're behind in school, Ooh. you just made recruitment a lot harder for yourself. So talk to your teachers, get your work in, talk to your teammates, get some help, do whatever you need to do, but get on top of that. Like, it's not that hard, guys. If it is hard, go get help. There's my spiel for today. Yeah, there's a lot of help out there. That See, that's the thing about when you're going through something, you're never mm -hmm. alone. There's always help available. Mm -hmm. That's like now, that's yesterday, that's now, and that's the future. Uh, there's always help, no matter what the issue is, no matter what the problem is, right? Right. That's that's 100% correct. So, like, you know, there's always people willing to help if people are willing to ask for it. You want to talk about it? Hey. We're like me and Alf. We're here. If you guys need help with something, DM your voice. <laughs> we got you. Yeah. All right. Let's let's do this. Okay. So this this show is gonna be packed, coach. We got we got a couple of really good uh, uncut segments. Um, I was able to go to CSM to watch the Bulldogs flex their muscles against the Foothill Owls. The Bulldogs are still the big dogs in the Bay Area. And, you know, I actually thought Foothill had a shot. But it's obvious there's there's a gap right now. They're going to get there. I'm hoping they're going to get there. I'm, I feel like I feel good about Foothill. But it was our game of the week. It was the first junior college game of the week for Get Sports Focus. Alejandro did a phenomenal job uh, with, with the highlights and everything. And... We shot a little bit more after the game. We talked to Coach Tim Tulak of the CSM Bulldogs. He is the head football coach there. And this uncut segment, it, 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 this is a great interview. So uh, we're going to roll that right now. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing, weightsandbars.com, Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. Ike's Love and Sandwiches. Championship level sandwiches every single time. South Bay Construction, a reputation built on trust. And by Fuel Good, fueling your success. Conveniently located in Santa Clara off Homestead Road. For more info, go to fuelgoodmealprep.com. What's up, Guess Sports Focus? I'm here with head coach Tim Tulak. Coach, thank you again for taking the time. You bet. Now, Appreciate it. going into this game, what did you basically tell your players? What was the mentality that you want to bring going into this game? What was the motivation to come out on fire like this? Yeah, our guys is, is essentially what we do Monday through Friday in practice, and then we, we, we turn it up on Saturday, all right? It's just carrying over all the hard work that we do, what we pour in uh, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. And then the score is going to take care of itself on Saturday. But it's all about putting that hard work in, man. We're an old school uh, values program, and we believe in rolling up that sleeves and doing the dirty work, hitting weights, uh, uh, pouring into the film room, practicing hard, and, and uh, you know, and that, that's just kind of a staple of the program. Now, I want to talk about your entire time here at San Mateo, and more specifically as a coach, what do you feel like you've learned? You know, being a head coach, what are some of the valuable things you yourself have learned as a person yeah. coaching here? Well, I'm a disciple of, of Coach Owens. He's on the wall over there, man. He's the godfather of the program. And and what he's, you know, his life lessons, you know, are rooted in me and rooted in our staff. And again, it's, it's, it's teaching respect, teaching hard work, teaching guys how to do things on and off the field. And we know when we take care of things off the field, you know, on the field, they're, they're going to be successful. So, so I'm just a, a byproduct of him and, and trying to carry on his legacy. That's awesome. Now I want to talk to you about this specific San Mateo team. What is special about this group of guys that you guys have right now this year? 
Yeah, the 24 team, man, this this group, I, I love these guys. They work hard. They, every day they show up ready to work. They they, they attack, you know, we, it, there's a regimen here. There's a way that we do things here. It's, it's run like a D1. And um, our, it's not for everybody. You have to be wired a certain way. You have to want to do what we do each and every day. And then that's why we have so much success at this level, but our guys transition to the next level. We sign, you know, 30, 35 guys a year, um, 30 plus D1. And those, those guys go in and dominate. Those guys make, you know, we had a handful of guys in the NFL. It's because of the preparation and the development. I just, we got a tremendous coaching staff that, that knows football. We got a Division I staff here. And, and these guys come in, they want to work. And, and uh, that, that's what I love about this team. They, 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 they want to work each and every day. That's awesome. Now, I want to talk to you as well. What do you feel like there's the one thing that you want these players to take away from being a part of this program, not just in football, but in life in general, being here at San Mateo, learning under you, what do you think the one thing you want them to take away from this program? Yeah, I mean, bottom line um, is how to be a good man. You know, what, what we can take from the game is so much. And um, being able to take the life lessons and apply them to your future life, to, you know, to, to your career, um, you know, these guys are going to be future leaders in, in whatever sp you know space they go into. They're going to lead their households and their families. They're going to be great husbands, great fathers, and they all come back. And I think it's it's the foundation, pouring that foundation here. Um, the, you know, the, the the character. You know, young men of great character, and taking that into whatever endeavor they do going forward. But but they're dynamic kids, and I, I got the best job in the world. I get to come work with these guys and this staff each and every day. Speak about the job you have. I got one last question for yeah. you. This is a fun question I always like to ask. Yeah. When you first started, yeah. what would you tell you know your first year head coach self right now? The knowledge that you have right now. If you were to talk to your younger self, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? Yeah. I just it's just put your head down and work and surround yourself with great people. Yeah. You know, I mean, when 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 you uh, when you when you're a young coach, like you know, I was I started here in 1997. Yeah. It's the first year here. And um, I had mentors like Tom Martinez and Larry Owens, and 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 I was um, I was ears open, eyes open, study, listen, and um, listen to their mentorship, listen to their guidance, pay attention, and then again those those values that those men you know have rooted in me, they changed me as a man and as a coach. Same things that I teach my kids, and so you know the the same values we teach in this locker room. Um, are the same values I teach at home with my own my own children, and um, and so I, I think that's the biggest thing to a young coach is is uh, hard work, you know, and surround yourself with great people. I mean, the the the, the, the your circle um, means everything, you know. And if you're around great people, you're going to usually learn and 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 grow and, and make good decisions and be in the right place. Yeah. So. Coach, you. thank you again for taking the time. Yeah. What a season you guys are having! Can't wait to see how you guys finish it up. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right. Take so, Coach, what do you think? You saw the highlights. You heard the interviews. Um, what stood out the most? <laughs> Dude, honestly, it's um, there's a lot of uh, – I'll just say it this way. There's a lot of nuggets in what he says. And if you're really listening to it, you'll pick up on a lot of them. Um, and I picked up on my own. Everything else is for anyone else's interpretation. Um, but that was a really good game. And, you know, it's, it's high level football. This is what the next level looks like. You know, these guys are very good. And just the way that, you know, he's put these, this program together kind of speaks for itself. So pick up the nuggets. You can anytime, like you guys, co like, uh, interview the coaches, anyone that listens to this, if you're a player, listen, like really listen, there's some things in there you might pick up on. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, one thing that stood out to me was uh, Hassan Demiso Mahasin, two tugs. He had a nice over the shoulder catch in the first drive uh, that really set the tone for the CSM Bulldogs. And then he had another one where it was like a low uh, towards the pylon catch. You know, that, that was beautiful. So, congratulations, Hassan. It was great to see you. It was cool because I walked on the field. And I see this blue figure coming straight at me. It was Hassan, man. He gave me, he gave me a, he gave me a hug. He greeted me. It was like, thanks for coming. And I was like, dude, I'm here to see you. And then I gotta give a shout out to my my son's one of my son's best friend. And he's also a family friend. And he 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 was the 152 pound CCS champ, CE 
Bakaosi. His full his real name is uh um Epoki. <laughs> he was a captain. I didn't know. He was a captain for the Owls, number 28. He had a couple of sacks. Uh I I, I think he hurt his knee a little bit, but it was great to see that. I, I saw Dominic Lamkin there. Bunch of dudes from like the Bay Area. It, it was definitely uh Sherrod Smith. He he went to MA. He was he had two picks. Did you see that pick? You see how he adjusted them? I was like, oh. Hey, I shot that game pretty well. You did. It was a, it was really yeah. good highlights. And, you know, it's there's still a lot of good players out here. So, yeah. Coaches at the next level that somehow seem to stumble on this. You got a lot of guys out here that, you know, they are looking for the next place. Yeah. The Andre Jackson touchdown, though. Ooh. I can replay that over and over. That was impressive. Just the like, different. Oh, no. oh, just no. a, I like that you brought back like you got mossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I, like, I like that better. It was, but man, sometimes it's just it's just hard to defend guys like that. So, but you know what, CSA man, Lolo Mataele from Patterson High School. He was out originally from EPA. Um, yeah, he he had a game. He was the MVP. Got the shirt. Kind of emotional about it at the end. He was he was kind of like shocked. He's like, oh, I'm getting the shirt. He, he actually told us, and you can hear a little bit of the audio at the tail end of the interview of the segment. Like he was like, Yeah, we watch I watch you guys on YouTube, and I never thought I'd get the shirt, this shirt, and now I have it. <laughs> So I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, oh, yeah. shout out to CSM and Foothill for uh for that experience. So hmm, we might be back. We might be back for more. I don't know if anybody's interested in JUCO. I mean, do you guys want to see us out there? I, I think it needs more coverage. CSF is uh playing on su- uh, on Saturday. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. Some people have asked. So that was that was one of my another one of my cool experiences this week, Coach. You want another one? Sure. The Oak Grove Eagles, baby. Now they played Lincoln, and I literally I told you I was going for the team that was gonna win the game. <laughs> Uh, I finally saw Kyan play in person as as an upperclassman. He's a junior, uh, dude. He's good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, his brother was there too to watch him, and I didn't even know. I didn't even recognize him. He's huge. He's he's all jacked up. Peyton Phillips. Where's where's he at now? State. Is that Sac State? Yeah, with Scudero and all those guys. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Wait. I'm pretty sure it's Sac State. Hold on. I thought he was at I, I'm pretty sure I thought he was at Cal Poly. I'm pretty sure he's at Cal Poly. They're both green. Cal yeah. Poly. My bad. Yeah. No, I'm pretty <laughs> yeah. I that. think I think Cal Poly was playing Sac, right? I think they Okay, no Sac. wonder he kind of gave me a funny look when I mentioned Scudero's name. I was like, really? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Oh man, I thought it was Sac State. What the hell? I'm no, sorry. Every, everyone's green. Who cares? I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tayden. I, I know. I, I screwed that up. No, but I didn't recognize him because he looked he looked a lot bigger, like than when he was in high school. That's what college does to you. I walked I walked past him a couple of times. I didn't even say hi because I didn't. I thought he was like one of the coaches or something. But no, it was great <laughs> to see him. Dude, that's I, awesome. I don't know where I got Sac State from. Anyways, they played Oak Grove. And uh shout out to uh Malachi Dominguez for uh putting his life on the line for the Eagles. He is our GSF offensive player of the week. Why? Why do you ask? Well, because the dude carried the ball 44 times. Yeah, 44 times. Oh, yeah, he chunked the heck out of that game. So good play call on that. And he's he's a, he's a load. That sounded a load. really strange, but he's a, he's a load. 
I was worried that he was going to start cramping up, and he did. But he came back. He finished the game. Um, four touchdowns and a couple of two-point conversions. Definitely well-deserving of the uh, uh, Offensive Player of the Week. Um, so, yeah, that was – congratulations, Oak Grove. Finally won your first game, and things are looking good for the next couple of games. They got Branham, which we're going to predict that game uh, later on. Um, but let's start with – so are you are you ready to do the prediction? Oh, we, we got one more uncut segment, Coach. Go for it. One more uncut segment. We got Coach Walsh winning his 200th win as a Sarah Padres coach. And um, – yeah, I got a call from Manalo right at the tail end of St. Francis game. He said, Dad, I need your help. And I said, what's up? You got to get here right now. I was like, well, the game is out of hand. The game is the, St. Francis is going to win the game, period. And and I was like, OK, well, so well, anyway, we had a little bit of an emergency. So I had to go uh, get to uh, San Jose City College and um we ended up doing an interview with Clay Hinsdale, which is going to come out later this week as a feature, and Coach Walsh for winning the uh, his two hundredth win. And uh, I'm going to roll it right now, and then we'll 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 start with Sarah versus Reardon for our prediction segment. How's that? Let's Sounds do good. it. All right, roll it. We got to an early lead, and, and I thought the defense played great all night. Offense jumped on them early. It was just one of those games where it just felt like Sarah from the start and ended with Sarah at the end. Everybody got a chance to play, and, uh, you know, we, we've had a lot of really, really tough and dark nights down here in the 24 years I've been the head coach, and, uh, you know, it was just good to see, uh, you know, our, our group, our community, our kids, um, all with the joy and, and, and happiness and playing together as a team, and that's what Padre football for me has been all about is, I've, I've had just the, the most wonderful opportunity to coach some of the best players. The kids are so great. Now a lot of them are men with families and kids and, uh, you know, real jobs and, and that whole concept of, hey, if you stick around long enough, there's going to be someone that comes back 20, 25 le years later and says, hey, you know, you helped me. You helped me change my life. And the things that, that I learned as a high school football player at Sarah's, you know, guided me, and I've been hearing that recently, and it's just, it's just been, um, you know, people told me that early, like, if you do it long enough, you're going to get that, and that's that's the true payout, and it is, it really is, and, you know, uh, I don't really think about, you know, how many wins we have, and it's just never really been my thing, but, you know, a milestone like 200 is impossible to ignore. <laughs> Did you did you ever think that you would get to 24 years when you took that job? No, time? no, never. No, I, I've always I think done a decent job of, of being where my feet are and, and being happy and then, um, just trying to live each moment like it's like it's my last. You kind of those are all cliche type stuff, but I've never really been a. Uh, I, I really have a trouble with nostalgia. It's hard for me to look back. Uh, it, it just the concept of time dissipating and. Uh, and, and not being able to ever get it back, uh, it, it unnerves me. So I don't really think about it, which I think is a strength because I, uh, I like to, because I know that I like to focus on the moment and, uh, and live in that moment and cherish that moment, the relationships that are being built in that moment. Um, it, it just helps me really govern. That's my governing principle when it comes to time. And also not look too much in the in too too forward. So when I was 26, I wasn't thinking, oh, how great it's going to be if we ever win 200. Um, so it has never really been part of um, any of my governing principles. But now that we're here, I just want to thank the the coaches who have been with me for for all these years, coaches who've come and gone. Uh, you know, without the without the co the coaches and the fraternity we have here at Sarah, I would have been long gone long ago. Um, and then all the players who've been here at Sarah since 2001, you know, the guys who laid down the foundation for, for this program and the things we've done, it just, I, it's just been, now those are the things that, um, you know, I just don't like looking back. I don't know why. It's hard for me to look back. I get like, super emotional just thinking about the past. And, um, 
you know, if you're going to force me to go there tonight, just uh, I just want to say thank you to all the players, um, you know, who, who sacrificed, you know, all the players that um, maybe I was too hard on. I, I'm sorry, um, but uh, I'm proud to be a Padre tonight. All right, folks, we're going to end this in a good way. Yes, sir. Have you been watching the World Series? <laughs> no, I haven't. I, Dude, you, I, gotta, you I, got a guy in there. I, I, I can't wait to watch that, but I will tell you, one of my favorite TV watching moments, and you, the kids say, oh, I'm him, I'm him, or whatever they say. The, the I him moment that I'm literally going to call for the rest of my life is Juan Soto's home run. That at bat, and I'm a baseball, I love baseball. Yeah. That at bat. I watched it in real time, was one of the greatest at-bats that I've ever seen in the history of baseball. And it was the I, I'm him moment, like Juan Soto is him. I will tell you that. And if anyone didn't get a chance to see that at-bat, go pull that thing up on YouTube. And when it comes to mono y mano, athletics at its finest, everything on the line, just two men going at it like that Juan Soto at bat is one of the best things I've ever seen. So I'm excited to watch. Actually, and it's coast to coast, and I don't like the yeah. Dodgers, and I certainly don't like the Yankees. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm definitely going to watch the World Series. Awesome, man. All right, we'll end with that. Coach. All right, All right Coach Walsh, congratulations again. Coach Andrew, any 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 reaction to what, what he said? You got to I mean, you. Yeah, you, you feel that, right? You know, I mean... It was just, I, I, you know, just looking at where it was going, I, I, you can tell, like, you know, he's very passionate about what he, what he does, what he's done for the Sarah community, what he's done for the program itself. Um, and then, you know, for him to end it the way that he did, that's, that's huge, you know, because it's not just about football, right? Like, I mean, look at this, like these guys go on to play further and further. And these guys are playing in the World Series. Yeah, like you can't you can't get any better. You can't get any better than that. So you know, big congratulations to Coach Walsh and all the success that you have and you will continue to have. And you know, you've made a lot of really great men, not just athletes, but a lot of great men. So hold on to that. That's huge. Congratulations. Well, speaking of huge, Coach, there's a huge game on Saturday. We're going to do the, the – so we're going to move into – we're going to move on to the prediction segment. And uh, one of the biggest games this weekend is going to be on Saturday in San Francisco. It's not going to be the Niners because they play in Santa Clara. But they're also on the bye, so they're not playing. They're also week. on the bye, yeah. The Sarah Padres against the Reardon Crusaders. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing. Weightsandbars.com. Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. Ike's Love and Sandwiches. Championship level sandwiches every single time. South Bay Construction a reputation built on trust and by fuel good fueling your success conveniently located in santa clara off homestead road for more info go to fuelgoodmealprep.com i feel like this is probably one of the anticipated games no matter what like i think everyone was looking forward to this game all year anyways like all season like this was one of the games that people did like kind of like circle like oh, just yeah. because just from a surface level of like what is on each team right so you got to really think about it that way now reardon just laid the smack down on midi and midi also got laid the smack down by sarah so just being able to watch that happen right there's still a lot of things that kind of still keep this game kind of even per se. Like you got, this game is still more even than people in like really anticipated. That's, that's kind of my take on it. Do I think Reardon can win this game? Yeah. Do I think Sarah can win this game? Yes. 
what's the difference maker? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. I'm just kidding. No, it's it's honestly, it's like it's minimizing because we've seen this from both teams, right? They will like they have like these weird mistakes that happen. Like when we went when I went to the Midi Sarah game, right? That fumble, like that's out of character. Never really see that happening. People will capitalize on things like that. Reardon has done the same thing. Like they will make mistakes like that. Like these are discipline mistakes that both these teams need to minimize. So that is your equal that not equalizer. This is the difference maker between the two. Whoever yeah. has whoever minimizes that wins this game. I have seen Sarah do less as of late. And I'll say it that way. As of late, I've seen Sarah make less of those disciplinary mistakes where you got to play the game discipline. So I'm going to go Sarah 35. Oh yeah. I'm going Sarah 35, 31. Cause it's still going to be a high powered game. There's too much talent on both sides of the team of the ball. Like there's, there's so much talent on both sides. Yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, I think so too. Um, I I don't really have anything else to say. I mean, you, you kind of said everything. I think this is going to be a, a shootout. And it's going to come down to which defense can stop the other side. Right. Right. Um, but with all the running that's going to be happening, I think, yeah, the, the, it, it should be a close game. I'm going to say 31-28, Coach. That's going to be my my final score. And I will say the team that's going to win this are the Padres. Yeah. I think with this one, like, because if you look at both teams, right, they're, they're in terms of, like, how they run, like, they're deep, like, they play pretty, like, they can both play pretty sound defense. It's just which one are, like, Sarah's more power, power run, and Reardon can air it out. A lot more, they're, right? So Sarah's defense has improved a lot. Oh uh, yeah, uh, like a lot. So I think that's just gonna kind of be like the difference between the two. It's like, you know, don't let Nano get loose, and then also don't let Mike, Mikey Mitchell get loose too. So there's there's a lot of things that could happen in this game. So, but like I said, it's gonna be who can minimize the mistakes, and I think Sarah can. I think Sarah will do that. They've been playing a lot better since you know how the season started you know and that was something that i think people saw it's like growing pains yeah no they're so that, their defense they had seven they had seven tfls against bellman a couple of interceptions they, they forced turnovers and they were they they were going for the ball so the defense this air defense is like we said in the beginning they're gonna improve throughout the season that SI game was very close. And I do believe St. Francis, I don't want to say lucky, but they, they, Sarah hurt themselves uh, in that game as well. So I don't know, man. Reardon yeah. caused a lot of problem. <laughs> yeah. They upset. I, I think it would be an upset if Reardon beat Sarah. So um, prove us wrong. Crusader purple, name. Yeah, purple, purple rain. rain. It's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy environment though, because it is Sarah and it's at home, and I believe it's gonna be senior night. Senior day, maybe. I'm not sure. Well, fine. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there for the JV and the varsity. So there you go. You guys can count on me being there. Young guys. All right, cool. So we we got that way. I, I I need to um write down your score, coach. What what, what was your score? 3521. 3531, sorry. 3531. 35 31. Padres. Mm -hmm. Or Padres. Okay. Cool. All right. We're gonna we're gonna go to a, a another Saturday game. I might be on this one too because it's 7 p.m. Burlingame at Cappuccino. So this is a rematch 
kind of like a rematch of the Palo Alto Vikings seven on seven championship game that happened in June. <laughs> Cappuccino won that game, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, so I don't know. We got Luke Levitt, Harkey, Flood on the Berlin game side. And uh Cappuccino, they're they're hot right now. Um I would say I'm gonna pick Berlin game this time. Uh, okay. They lost to Kings Academy, but they, they bounced back last week. So I I think it's gonna be a 35-21 game. B game, B game. Okay. I mean, I still haven't seen a lot of cappuccino this year. Um, but I mean, besides the you know, what we covered on and th this is not because like I haven't watched you guys, it's also because like I haven't watched a lot of things. I'm a busy guy, sorry. No disrespect. But I did watch that seven on seven. They are home though. They are home. Yeah, and I know play I mean, this is this is a good game. Like I, I think this is a really good game. Like six and two. Versus no, is it six and two? I, I believe it's six and two versus six and two. This is a first place game, period. Yeah, first place game. So I don't know. I mean, if Berlin game has to come back from behind again, I I think with the because that's the thing that's been happening with Berlin game. Like they come back like late. It's like if Berlin game gets started right away, then Berlin game can run away with it. They have. They have the players to do it. Um, they definitely have like the the firepower to do it. Um, but if Cappuccino, you know, Cappuccino's been playing well, you know, based on like you know what you've you've said, you know, I'm doing a little research. I'm reading some stats right now. I mean, Cappuccino gets started right away too, so that's the thing. So if Berlin game plays catch up, then I don't. I think Cappuccino wins this game, and if they do, I'm gonna you know I'm just gonna go with Cappuccino. Yeah, I'm gonna go with cappuccino. I'm gonna go thirty. Hmm, I'm gonna go thirty to twenty-one. Cappuccino. Thirty to twenty-one. Thirty. Yeah. Cat. Got it. Got it. Got it. Here's another one. It's also on Saturday at night. It's Carlmont against Half Moon Bay. At Half Moon Bay. Great stadium, man. So it's, it's a nice little Football America stadium right there at Half Moon Bay. Um, so Half Moon Bay, they lost to San Mateo. And they bounced back. No, they they beat San Mateo. They lost prior to that. But they bounce back. So, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to make it simple. Um, I think Carl Mont's uh, last couple of weeks have been a little bit tougher. And as far as, like, being battle-tested and all that stuff, um, I do like their offense and how they perform. So I, I, I think they can beat uh, Half Moon Bay uh, on Saturday. I'm going to go 38-30, to Carl Mont. Hmm. Oh man, half home pay is tough though. I know that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it's gonna be more like when I pick them, they lose, and when they when we don't pick them, they win. <laughs> I'm still gonna pick them. I'm gonna go half moon bay 28 21. I don't think it's gonna go that high. They're, they're, I mean, based on like if you look at the strength of like who they both played throughout the year, like it's still kind of pretty. They're they played pretty similar teams. Um, I think half moon bay is a little bit more physical and just. You know they'll they'll hit so, but I don't think they're gonna. It's gonna go over thirty. I'm gonna say twenty eight, twenty one, half moon. Got it, got it. I got you, coach. I got you. All right, next game. Ooh, we know these two teams. Branham at Oak Grove. One of the games that we thought we actually thought that by this time of the season, Oak Grove would be flirting with the first place spot, but that's not the case. No, it's not. But they have turned. I I believe they turned things around. Not this past week. 
But the week the prior. Week, yeah. I think it was I think that was a wake up game. That was for a them. Wake up game. Um I think for Oak Grove, like it's good. I think that was the first game that actually had everybody, you know, like that eligible playing, like that whole game. Um, I think that was against Christopher. That was like the first game they had everybody to play. Yep. So it was good to have them all there. Um, so on that note, I'm going to roll with my guy Malachi. I think Oak Grove is going to bring it to Branham. Oak Grove is going to bring it to Branham, people. That's what Coach yeah. said. What's the score, Coach? What's the score? I think this is going to be like a 28-18 game. Okay. Yeah. I want the score to be higher because I know Branham likes to put points on the board. They do. Um, yet I think I think just coming down this stretch, Oak Grove has played like they did not have an easy like schedule coming to this point. It's like they played all the tough teams, like all like the really, really tough teams were at the beginning of their season. And it they really, you know, it kind of molded them into what they are. I mean there's a lot at stake at this game. Like these next two weeks are going to be really crucial for every team playing. Like you're playing for a playoff spot right now mm -hmm. or a league title. So there's a lot at stake at this point, but I think Oak Grove is going to do it. So 28, 18 go Eagles. They won their first game. Finally, I was there. I saw it. I could, I could see what's working, but I'm, I, Branham, they play with a lot of speed. They're very snappy as far as, you know, their, their play calling and everything. I'm going to give it to Branham, though. I, I'm going to have – Oak Grove's going to have to prove me wrong on this uh, because I just think Branham is a little bit more polished when it comes to their offense. And I believe they can dictate this entire game by moving the ball – how they, but by, by, by their offense. Uh, I know Ogrove's going to slow it down. They're going to slow it down, like slow it down. <laughs> and that should be their strategy. But I do think uh, Branham, it's a big play, kind of an offense. Zane will probably score two tugs. I could just see it. Um, but if Oak Grove keeps the ball away from the offense, the Branham offense, they can they can they can upset. So, but I'm gonna go with Branham. Uh 4935. It's gonna be a shootout. Oh, you're gonna make Ryan play. <laughs> I see. Well, they, okay, 4935. I do see a couple of defensive plays that can make a difference in this game. We okay. might keep return for a touchdown as well. You know, you never know, but with, with this kind of game, 49-35, I'm going for the five-pointer, coach. I know you are. I'm down 11 right now, so I got I to gotta get it together. <laughs> I know. The thing is, like, my fantasy team's starting to turn around, so I already know, like, where I'm at with everything. So I'm good. Yeah. I am I never get worried. It's how, I, it's how you finish. How you finish. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's a good thing. Uh, this one... Del Mar at Piedmont Hills. Congratulations to the Piedmont Hills uh, coaching staff. They are our GSF coaching staff of the week. They've won a bunch of games. Uh, I, I believe they're on a five-week uh, streak right now, uh, five-game winning streak. Uh, and I just think their 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 schedule really prepared them to finish strong. So. I got it right here, 21 to 14, Piedmont Hills over Del Mar. Yeah, I really haven't seen much of Del Mar. Not because I, again, as I prefaced it earlier, it's not because I haven't. It's because Piedmont played Christopher. Piedmont also played Monte Vista Christian. Yeah. I, I work with players from both teams, so I'm able to watch some of these games. Um, so I've just seen more Piedmont Hills, and Piedmont Hills has players. They have, they have great players, um, and they can score too. Like and they're really tough. So I give Piedmont Hills an edge. So I, you know, I agree. I'm in a second, twenty one fourteen Piedmont Hills. Go Pirates! So we're both having the same score. Yeah, twenty one fourteen. 
Okay. Hey, this is a great opportunity for Del Mar, the Dons, to uh, prove us wrong. Um, Do it. uh, there's like two players there that we're looking at for the All-Star game. So um, do your thing, fellas. Gun, 8-0, my Gun Titans. They're taking on Saratoga on the road. Six one and one Saratoga. Um, if you look at <laughs> if you look at Guns' schedule results, there's a lot of zeros on the opposite side. So it's kind of hard to bet against them, and they're also my school. Titan for life. Uh, no, I'm gonna pick Gun. I think Gun can roll Saratoga. um in the first half and just put it on cruise control um 49 to 21 that's my score g u n n fight 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 again don't know anything about <laughs> these two teams um so i'm picking purely purely based on record and scores nothing wrong with that uh, yeah i'm gonna go with gun i'm gonna say 35 7 gun he's just throwing it out there yeah he was more of a wcl expert so yeah but i mean it's not that it's not that i don't watch some of these games it's just that i i, I don't and it's again it's no it's disrespect just got the list today <laughs> that too i also just got had the a, list today whoever in charge of this thing Thanks a lot. Yes, yeah, send it earlier. But then again, I also know why you didn't send it earlier. I had a busy weekend. Hey, there you go. We we it, we were chilling. It was my anniversary, and you know whoever was in charge of this was like being respectful of my oh my week my weekend. So thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you, Chapo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out to uh, shout out to my wife, Crystal. Ten years married. For those of you guys that didn't know. 10 years married. I, I made it to double digits. <laughs> there you go, coach. Well, speaking of your significant other, she went to a high school. She did. High school called Wilcox High School. Adrian Wilcox is what I heard. The, yeah. They are taking on Los Gatos, the mighty wildcats of Los Gatos. This is this one's actually. I forgot who I was talking about this well, with. I believe Los Gatos is undefeated, right? Still. Right. Yeah, I think so. And Wilcox is undefeated in league so far. Yeah, so they're both undefeated in league. Like this is the like everyone looks for this game, especially in that PAL division. Like they look at this game. This is like the game game because this kind of determines who is going to the open and who is going to two. Like this is this is the game. This is the game, the game. Um, I don't know. This is hard. Like, do we just think they're around Los Garros as the open division champs? No, Ooh. I will not. Oh, did I just say that? Oh, no. We do not. We must not. I'd watch a lot of Harry Potter. Remember, like, the wizard, she, she bro, they're spell. really good. But it says we must not tell lies. No, they're, no, Los Gatos is really no, Los Gatos is very good though. But it's also like you don't know because just to like again, no disrespect to Los Gatos on that one. I had nothing to do with. It. I was just trying to make a joke and it didn't work. But Wait, it did they play Pittsburgh? They, I don't remember. Let Can me you look, look up at the record. I had a, I, 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 I'm not sure if they did. They beat we, no, they beat Liberty. They didn't play Pittsburgh. Never mind. I was thinking. Are of, we? Yeah. Are we like just? brain farting right now we're just not paying attention much to los gatos these days i don't know why but i'm all for the underdogs i'm picking wilcox they did play 24 pittsburgh. to 21 right but they did play pittsburgh and they beat pittsburgh they lost they lost Ooh. they lost okay. okay so i do okay so this is the okay. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna go with Wilcox on this game. Me too. The re yeah, the reason being is so my reason behind this has everything to do with 
you know, with how, you know, Wilcox has played, they played some good games. I mean, the, the losses that they had this year, it's a Berlin game. Like that was just kind of like, dude, like Berlin game, like really, it they, was just, they, they lost that game. They lost that uh, game. And then they, Valley they, Christian. Yeah. And then Valley Christian, it's the beginning of the year. You know, not everyone, like not everything was together yet. The one thing that like kind of like sticks out to me with Los Gatos is this MA game. It was close. That was a close game. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sticks out to me, like as to like why? Why was this such a close game? I I don't know if we have highlights on it. Like I would like to look at it again and just kind of see like what happened. But you know they didn't blow. That that was the that was league opener too for them. You know, and Wilcox is ending the league with MA. So there's a couple things that are going to happen with this. I do think Wilcox can pull it out. I don't think this game is going to get very – it's not going to be very high scored, though. Like, what did you say for yours? 24-21, Wilcox Chargers. Let's go. I, I, think, I think more like 21-17, Wilcox. Okay. Like that close. Like, it, it's not going to get blown out of the water – in this game like if we again like if we look at like who they played and how they've been playing it's again i would give los galaxy edge in terms of like their schedule because of that pittsburgh game and the liberty game like you know those are just very different out out there teams but wilcox has it gotten better throughout the whole season like yeah, these last couple helping. these last couple weeks these last couple weeks they just they've been putting it on their opponents yeah because so, you know, you, you got a new quarterback, those things take time to perfect the way they run their offense, right? Takes time. And also game speed is different from practice speed. So right. I, I believe they're they're just they're they're ramping up as the season. They're starts. right, they're right there. So I think this might be this might be the year Wilcox dethrones Los Gatos. Okay. Well, what was your gun score again? I forgot. Uh, 35 7. 35 to 7. Go Titans. Yeah. All right. I took my, SA, my SAT there. So I kind of like gun. <laughs> you did. Uh, they almost they almost hired me back in the day when I was like first starting to like get into high school coaching. Oh, nice. I almost worked out there. But... Well, I think I, I really like their coach. And I would love to work with gun in the offseason. Let's figure that out. Let's do it. Oh, we know this game. Midi. <clears throat> that's something I thought. Midi versus Bellarmine at San Jose City College. Go Monarchs. Yeah, go ahead. No, I this is a you know, this is a good game. You know, I think this is a very this is an important game for both teams. Like, you know, this is like a this is like an identity game for who you are. You know, you got to you gotta finish it out. I know Midi got plagued with a couple of things that they, you know, unfortunately, I would call them the unfortunate events that happened that kind of like turned a lot of things around. It's just, you know, how do you, how do you overcome that? You try to, you finish the season strong, right? Like that's what you got to do. Um, I could see Midi like really putting Bellarmine down on this, but I also don't see Bellarmine like backing away as softly as you know people are taking them right now um so i think this is going to be like a 28 14 game midi um i'd say probably just pound the rock with lazaro just pound the rock with him and you know if some of these like unfortunate things are finally over and they can be back at full strength this is then it's a blowout like they can blow this out but, you know, I don't know if – I don't know if these things are going to be happening. So I have no idea. If they are, then this is a blowout. And I don't see – I honestly don't even see Bellman scoring then if these guys are playing. Hmm. 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 Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is um, I believe three or four Bellman starters got hurt against Sarah. I don't know the, the the severity of the injuries, but they went out. 
they were they were um they were done after that like leg injuries ankle um i think there was a knee like twisted ankle like it was it was a bad um one of their guys like went down so <clears throat> two games left in the season i'm not sure how bellerman is dealing with just how the season's going but i know midi they have a better shot at it i think midi is going to have a really good uh I think Mitty's going to win this one. I I got 35-18. Bellerman, they should fight, you know, like in the in the beginning. I mean, they they're not they just got to execute, man. Bellerman, you know, that was a hard-hitting game against Sarah. They were hitting. And that's actually the first time that I've seen Bellerman actually like like I mean, they can take hits. So it's time to for them to make the hits. If you can take right. it, you should be able to hit somebody too. So yeah. this is like a this is this is a program thing, man. You guys gotta fight. So, but I'm not gonna pick you. I'm picking Mitty. Um, but as far as you know, what I saw with how the game was against Sarah, yeah, they they were it, that was just a total mismatch. So I'm picking Mitty 28 to 4 uh 35-18. Um yeah. Some injuries occurred, and that's 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 not good. Hey, we saw Reese though. Reese was walking, with yeah, a boot or a crutch. So that's a great thing. That was that was a really cool thing to see. Um, and I hope also, I hope he's healed up by the uh, All Star game. Yeah, no, man. If we can, no rush. But if 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 he if he if, can, we work with Bellman in the off season, so we know the guys that 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 they have, and you know. Maybe the All Star experience would be a good reset for uh, a handful of you guys. Bruce Mahoney game at Kizar, Sagar Cathedral versus the Saint Ignatius Wildcats. I love the jersey, by the way, fellas. The 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 jersey, the black jerseys. Those are sick. Oh, so there there's this thing on YouTube that I I guess like they're called the cherries. I don't know. I guess it was supposed to be like not a good thing like to be called cherries, but somebody wrote black cherries. I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> they look good in black. They look good in red. So anyways, SI, Sacred Heart Cathedral. Since I, th this week's been like going for the underdog kind of a thing with the Wilcox and, and all. I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to pick Sacred Heart. Wow. Oh, damn. Wow. Wow. Really? Whoa. Hold on. I'm biggest like a heart. I'm going to pick some 28 to 24. This Jared Kamara kid and Zion wow. Freeze. That's really. By the way, this is like, I had no idea. Like, for those Are that you? think, like, this is not a fake reaction. Like, I'm actually like stunned. Like, Real? Are you sure? <laughs> you know what? Sure. Okay, but you know what I was gonna say is like, let's make our prediction on this. And I think in the next couple days, I think we need to do a quick. We need to do like a quick segment <laughs> with one and only Ethan Castle. Oh yes, Ethan, because he is the Bruce Mahoney game guy. Yeah. Like he's he's all about this, and he knows these teams <laughs> in and out. You know, we've only seen what we've seen, but he knows like more in and outs than we do. So, Ethan, take what we say right now, and I want to see you comment, and I want to see whose side are you going to go with. Are you going to go with Alf with the underdogs? Or are you going to go with me with SI because of what I've seen? And I think SI is going to win this game, and I think it's going to be 28-7 SI. Let's hear it, Ethan. Do you want me to, to kind of explain myself a little bit here? Why I'm picking the <laughs> Sega Heart? Yeah, do a little bit because I do want to do this with Ethan because I want to hear what he says It because I want to hear him argue with you. <laughs> okay, look, listen. It all comes down to attitude. Okay, that's a good point. Them Sega boys Hearts. from the city. I mean, I'm, uh, them boys from the city. I'm talking about Sega Heart Cathedral. The fighting Irish. They they believe in what they're doing and they're willing to fail doing it. 
But when they succeed, they succeed a lot. They succeed. They go yeah. for big, big plays. They Man, do. Chris had two touchdowns against St. Francis. I don't know who scored the other touchdown, but all I know is like Michael Sargent, that, that, that's a field general right there. That's their field general. And I know Soren Hummel, he's, he's great as well. So this is going to be a showdown. I mean, it should really be game of the week. Um, but yeah, my score is 28, 24 second heart. I think Jared yeah. is going to do some, some good things in this game. You know, I will agree with you. Like, cause Sacred Heart is still, still the younger team. Yeah. That's. But the more I think about it now. That's scary. Maybe not. <laughs> I can't change my mind now. You can't change your mind now, but I like that's. I can't change my mind. I'm going, I'm going experience over, I'm going experience. You're going experience? Okay. I, I got the underdog thing going. Yeah. You got the youngins and honestly, shoot, they've. I almost said it in a bad word. You might have had to bleep me. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> I almost said the other word. But no, Sacred Heart has been showing up like with they these have- young pl- with these young players. Like we're gonna hear their names for a while. So when they beat Mitty, that was that was crazy. So, you know, I I I you know, it's SI. If I want to be right, I would pick SI. But if but you but it's okay. Cap- but you want you want to be wrong. It's no. Fine. If I want <laughs> if I want the if I go with the gut, just from what I've seen, you go in Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart. They just fight all the way through. It doesn't they matter. They do. Or is they just do? Yeah. I saw. I, gotta give that to them. I saw. Uh, good. Uh, I saw Si get shut down by Sarah in the uh, uh, Saint Francis in the second half completely. Like they 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 couldn't do anything. So, but then again, you know, SI's got more players, and uh, the personnel is going to be a little bit different. I, I, this this is going to be a big game, uh, always a big game. Uh, but yeah, I'm picking. Man, I'm getting hot just just thinking about this game. You know, I'm getting hot. It's hot in here. But I'm sticking with my pick. Let's go fight an Irish. Did you see the highlights with the St. Francis uh, Sacred Heart with the freshman against Perion Williams? He had a pass breakup, and then that's what like, I said. <laughs> and then that's what I'm saying. Like, Perry was like, "Scoreboard." <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like these kids from Sacred, these young kids from Sacred Heart. Like, this is why. Like, I think you know, this is like a good. This is good. Like, honestly, like this is. Okay, I'm not saying anything bad. I know. I'm not saying anything bad. It's it's good. It's we're gonna be hearing these names for a long time, yeah. like for a while with these with these kids from Sacred Heart Cathedral. The, the, like like as long as you guys keep building on what you guys are doing now, like you guys are gonna be like a force to reckon with. Nice. Like carry it over into the playoffs. Thank you, William. All, yeah, I'm no, the guys. I know we're gonna hear these names for the next couple of years. Yeah, like that's gonna that's crazy, right? And look what happened last year. We didn't hear about anything like Sacred Heart. Like Michael Sargent started showing up like towards the end of the season. Like we're like, oh, who's this? Like we started even saying like, who's this guy? And now like, like this is, this is where, like, this is exactly like what you want to hear and see, like, you know, from a team. So I'm still going to go experience over the age right now, just because of like the gameplay and how many years like these guys have played together versus like, you know, this young up and coming talent. Just for that reason. That is the only reason why I'm going there. Just for that reason. Yeah. It, it's hot, coach. And I know I'm sweating. So hurry, let's go. <laughs> Dang, it's hot. Before we move on to the next segment. Oh, my bad. Oh, <laughs> was not. Hey, yo, I was not, I was not expecting that. That was, that's a good. Congratulations, Kingston, on senior. Well, I think it was senior night, right? Senior night. Congratulations, dude. Night. There was a shirt that was delivered to me on the sideline. And Where's it was mine. I, I said everything I got two good of about them. I got two. The other one's over there. I got the Kaimani, the the Keala, Ke, Keana Aina brothers shirt. But uh, yeah, this is the the Kingston merch. I don't know how much this is. It's priceless. 
It's gonna How come I didn't get one? Was it because I wasn't here? Was it because I wasn't here I didn't get one? Dude, I've said everything good about Kingston all season. Well, guess what, Coach Andrew? I'm sure you can you could probably get hooked up if you show up to the game on Friday. <laughs> Dang. Oh, we have one more game left. St. Francis at Valley Christian. Mm. This is a very, very interesting game. You want to go first or should I go first? No, you can. Uh, I want you to sweat in your shirt for a little bit. <laughs> no, this is. Hey, this like, you just, hot. Yeah, but can you said it right there, right? Like, this is going to be a, this is going to be a really this is actually a really tough game to call. Like we I know we've been saying it, but like these last few weeks, like these games that have been ba- like been played like in the West Catholic have been really hard to call. Like there's a lot like everyone's starting to show up and this is. I haven't seen the West Catholic play like this in a couple of years, like in a few years, like where everyone just kind of beats up on each other. Scores aren't really like, they're not blowing each other out. Like, I mean, unless you're. Because Sarah graduated 23 starters. That's why. (laughs) Yeah. So it's like the, the playing field kind of evened out, but the thing is like, you know, these other teams have grown into the program. Right. So this is the thing that like, this is why the West Catholic is so dangerous is because you have players that grow into their programs. With that being said, St. Francis, I'm giving them the edge in this game, like, but not by a lot, not by a lot at all. I can't. It's too hard to. Reason being, that defense at Valley Christian is very good. It's a very good defense, right? So, you know, it's gonna, yeah, we're gonna, you're gonna have to rely on the legs of Kingston if you want this to be a blowout. Let Kingston cook. Like, just let him cook. Let him do his thing, right? Because those that secondary at Valley Christian, they play really well. That's, like, from the linebackers back to the secondary, like, they know how to play very well. They hawk for the ball. I got to give them – you got to give credit where credit's due. You know, so I got to give that to them. And I don't think Aaron has faced another, like, secondary since – well, hasn't faced one like this for a while. Like, this is a great secondary. So if you can keep it on the ground and Kingston just does what he does, then yes, St. Francis can run away with this game, right? If the defense puts the pressure on this young quarterback at Valley Christian and they hold the line because they have two very good running backs back there at Valley. They've got two very good running backs and they have, um, and then they have a really good young receiver in Savion. So it's like they have the weapons to do it. They're just young. We don't know what they're going to do. So this is where maturity in in the league and at this level comes to play here. But I don't see this as a blowout. I see this as like a down to the last, I would say like if it's the fourth quarter, like beginning of the fourth quarter, the last team that scores, that's it. It's over. So I'm calling maybe like a 28-21 game. St. Francis. That was my long-winded explanation. Um, hey, I, I've been picking Valley, um, and I've been pretty successful at it, except for last week. Uh, so I don't know if you know this. Jordan Vargas went out in the second half, I believe. So this is what happens when I leave. I, well, why? Why does this happen when I leave for, like, a vacation? It's like I'm not allowed to go anywhere. He was in street clothes. Like, he, I, I believe he got hurt, according to uh, Kevin. So that – that's a big blow in the defense. So I was a little surprised that, um, well, I mean, SI is the second half team and they have a really, really good kicker. And Kenny was the one who took them to distance, really. Uh, he's a GSF All Star nominee. You know, we're we're going to confirm him this week. So talking about Valley Christian, this is like a family thing. So Coach Scherenberg going against Coach Scherenberg. <laughs> as far as defense, both both are defensive guys, right? So it's mm-hmm. just like which defense can stop the other one short. Right. <laughs> they both have the line. I would say they both have running backs. Because Leggett is is he's a really good running back as well. This is going to be a great test. Defensively, 
Oh man, they're they they look pretty even defensively. That's what I'm saying. So it all comes down to the quarterbacks. You have a veteran QB, you have a rookie QB. Who's gonna make the better decisions? Who's gonna make who who's gonna make who's gonna carry their team? So with that, I gotta go with St. Francis. I think St. Francis is uh I, I think this is their year. This is they're having a special year. This dude right here, best in the Bay Area, probably in NorCal, I would say. Did you read the stats? The first half stats? I saw it. That's crazy. It's insane. Touched the ball four times, five times, got to the end zone four times. And they were they those were like hard runs. They were long. There's a shot of Kingston running away from Mikey Williams. Number eight. And I'm just thinking it's like, man, next couple of years is gonna be a different picture. It's gonna be Williams running away from somebody. <laughs> I think he's I think he's capable of being the next guy. Uh, but that's next year. We're not going to talk about that now. We're not going to. This is Kingston's year. The kingdom must conquer the hill. They're going to hate me at Valley. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. No, and like we're not saying anything bad about. No, them. we're not like, saying. We're anything saying... Bad. No, I'm just. I'm just saying. Like I think. I think. If, if this is going to be okay, you, you ready for my score? What was your score, by the way, of the Sacred Heart game? Sacred Heart? Yeah. Sacred Heart. Uh, game. I said 28 7. 28 7. Yeah. And then SI? this one I said SI. And I said this one 28 21. This one is 28 21. St. Francis? Okay, cool. Um, I think this is gonna be a forty-two to fourteen St. Francis game. They just have a lot more weapons, I believe, when it comes to the overall scheme of things. I mean, you got mm -hmm. like Regales catching touchdowns and running away from speedsters. You got Perry on William. Uh, the, I think the passing game is not gonna be very. It's not gonna be featured in this in this um, game until later on yeah until it has to be used yeah so this is gonna be like this is gonna be like a like this is gonna be a running game i and wouldn't be surprised like, if valley christian takes a 14 to nothing lead in the first um the first quarter of this game uh mm -hmm. francis they adjust well under pressure and with kingston playing the way he is and you know Jackson Cahoon, our GSF Week 10 um, Defensive Player of the Week. Yeah, Chase is back. They got Kevin in there too. Like those backers are going to be ready for those for the running the running backs. Si Si didn't wasn't able to um, maximize that. So, um, Bala Christian almost came back. They did. Yeah. So I would I would say yeah twenty eight twenty two thanks for the for the shirt. This was Kingston's mom gave it to me. <laughs> it's a gift. So I said I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna wear it next week. I'm not gonna wear it to the game, but if any of you guys have merch that you want us to rock it during the GSF Weekly Show, hey, we'll, we'll rock it. This is gonna end up over here. We're gonna frame it. The it's, uh, it's a it's a wonderful shirt. That. I think I I feel like I don't get anything because I don't come to the games. <laughs> I think that's why. <laughs> don't worry, coach. You're gonna get hook, hooked up soon. I hope so. Maybe I'll start showing up to games just so I can get stuff. Get Coach Andrew to the game. Let's get Coach <laughs> Andrew to the game. Okay. Uh, you you want to do some quick hitters? Let's go. Go for it. <laughs> I don't got any. What do you got? You don't have any? Um, uh, I, I said it early. The game. Shout out to Cyrus. He, he was at the St. Francis game. Uh, 
Let's see. Let's see. I already gave Epoke a shout out. Uh, Coach Butler was right. I told him, hey, Foyle's got a shot. And he was like, I told you. It's a different level. I was like, yeah, I know. It's a different level. You guys, you guys <laughs> demolished them. Um, the speed of that game was unreal. I I mean, I've been to a Cal game, Stanford game, San Jose State game, where you have to be like super far away from the sideline. But watching CSM and Full Hill go at it and me being so close, I was like, whoa, this is I love I love it, man. It was like everything was flying. I shoot <laughs> better when the teams are better. Yeah, yeah. Um I don't know. Any anything in the news that we 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 wanna any any issues that we need to to address right now, Coach? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I'll say this one. Um, shout out to every team that's probably like what I think this this week and next week, or these last these last few weeks. Um, congrats to all the seniors. We're probably gonna say it again in the next couple of weeks. We'll, we we'll keep saying it. Um, season's ending. A lot of kids are. A lot of schools are going through like senior night and all that. So congrats to all the seniors. And all that, you know, finish your season strong wherever it may go, whether it's going to continue in the next couple of weeks or if it's not. Uh, take care of your bodies at this point right now um, because the playoffs is a brand new season. Can't mm-hmm. can't keep rolling into it like you think it's going to be like the regular season. You have no idea what to expect. Teams come in a lot different. Some teams don't even care about winning the league. They just care about getting to the playoffs. Because that's when their league, that's when their season actually starts. So be ready. This is to all those teams. Be ready. And for all the schools that are probably going to be done in the next week or so, you know, figure out what what went well this year. See what you need to learn from and seek help. That was I seen I feel like that was the topic that we started with. Seek help. We might as well talk about it right here, right now, Coach. We're, we're kind of like an on-the-spot kind of a thing. So Coach Andrew and I have decided. Are we ready for this? I think we are. Let's do it. Coach Andrew and I have decided to offer an opportunity to our local athletes here in San Jose and over in Gilroy. Uh, we will have a 12U and a 14U uh, developmental kind of a – team it's like oh. a develop it's like a it's like a it's like a program academy slash thing like we're, it's we're kind of thing with fine tuning it we're fine tuning it but basically we are looking for a total of 30 athletes 15 on each side 15 14 u 15 12 u who want to be football players who want to transform themselves into high level football players do you have to be very good right now no we're actually looking for kids that are not very good but want to be good want to be high level by the time they get to their junior and senior year in high school so if you are that if you're a parent and you see this and you're interested you can register on our website or there's going to be a link on our social media. Follow our social media. In the next couple of days, by the end of the week, we're going to have a form that you can fill out. Uh, This is a program that we've been putting together behind the scenes. We want to make a difference. We don't want to just go for the best players and all that stuff. No, we're loyal to the Bay. We want, we're loyal to the South Bay. We want to help, um, young athletes develop themselves into the, the best. best you can be. There you go. The best you can be. I mean, it's not a guarantee that you're going to be like, you know, highly recruited or anything like that, but we do believe in hard work. And if you put it in, if you make those deposits, like coach, coach Harrison, he's got the make your daily deposits. I love that by the way. Uh, if you, if you, if you do the consistent work under proper guidance, this dude right here is a professional strength and conditioning coach. We have resources to tap into when it comes to training, nutrition, and all that stuff. And we're going to bring it all together. And that's what the program is going to be. All right. Uh, finding adults who actually care 
and want to put out good product is is a is a main thing for for us here. And I feel like, hey, we're ready to do this. Let's 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 rock, man. We got coach yeah. people who involve. Uh, I've I've spoken to a couple of other uh, groups and coaches that that are going to be involved in this. So we're just looking for dedicated athletes, families, actually, because parents are going to be. I mean, the parents are going to be the one making the decision. Um, so yeah, in the next couple of days, watch out for that. I think it's going to be a really good experience. And uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. And the fact that we, you know, we're doing it in two locations, like, you know, it just means that like, you know, the, the line shows there, there's no bound to the line. Like you don't have to be in San Jose to do this. Like you guys can be from down in this area. We're just trying to find centralized areas so that, you know, we can create this experience for, you know, pretty much everybody and anyone that wants to, to do this. Um, you get out of it, what you put into it. Um, I tell that to all the, athletes that train here you get out of it what you put into it um some days are gonna suck some days you feel like you didn't do anything but you're doing something because you're here yeah right you gotta learn every day like you gotta understand like it's all part of it yep so yeah that's 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 what we've been working behind the scenes this is kind of like out of the blue <laughs> it's okay <laughs> we're no, just we out of the blue kind of people we are you know we don't need no script we don't need no script. We don't need no anything. Uh, we do have to take notes sometimes so that it makes life easier. But uh, yeah, so this week we got the Valley Christian freshman JV and varsity games covered. I do plan on being at the JV game for the Reardon Sarah game. So that should be fun. I'm going up there. You might as well. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, the big game of the week. We will announce that later on this week. So. If you are an athlete and you will be part of the GSF Senior All-Star Experience, you know where to go. You know where to do. You know where to do. You know what to do. Go to the website, have your coach or your parent, an adult, nominate you. And uh, we are going to be confirming players this week. I already mentioned a few players during this whole thing, this whole one hour and whatever minute long. <laughs> it's chaptered, people. You can skip around. It's all good. Yeah. Um, anything else? I'm good. We got the uncuts taken care of. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this week and next week. Me too. Maybe I'll come out to the game Andrew, St. Francis, Valley Christian at Valley Christian this Friday. We'll see. We'll see. It depends. It depends. It depends. It all depends it's, on what? <laughs> it depends on because fall sports are ending and I have to work and I have to get ready for Panthers. You might you might get a free shirt. All right. You pulled my you pulled my leg. I'm just kidding. If it's guaranteed, then I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't don't no don't don't take me as that kind of person. I'm good. <laughs> I'll I'll let you know. We'll see. All right. It's a game day decision, people. Coach Andrew will either be there or not be there. I'm definitely going to be there. So this is going to be a great matchup. Yeah. But Valley Christian, you, prove me wrong, Valley Christian. Prove me wrong. If you really want me there, like, send me a DM. I need 25 DMs in order for me to go. 25 DMs. I don't know if anybody watches the show, like, this far out, but <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Okay, so maybe we'll we'll put ten. We'll do a trivia. What did Coach Andrew say? At the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think people actually do watch this. I don't know. I I I just I think people actually do. But it's fun doing it. You know, for you and me, I have fun doing it. My cat. Oh, I have a lot of fun right now. I think he found something in the ceiling. <laughs> so we gotta wrap this up, Coach. Thank you for watching GSF Weekly. We're moving on to week 10. And thank you for watching.